Hello, everybody, and welcome. Hello, everybody. Oh my God! Wait, 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 wait. Hello, oh my God! Wait, 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 wait. Where is this feedback coming from? What the? Where is this feedback coming from? What the <laughs> oh, I didn't mute myself on something. Ah. <laughs> Oh no, I'm sorry. This is the first time I have produced my uh, uh an Arena Kings and as you guys know, I am very very scuffed at streaming. So, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Nemo, um also known as Chiyu and yeah, I'm just a streamer and Women Grandmaster. So welcome to today's Arena Kings. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, I mean, we're going to be seeing some very exciting games. Actually, the games have started. So let me actually pull those up. Yeah, thank you. Off to a flawless start. It, it, it really could not get worse, but I will make sure I find a way um, to make this to make this even more scuffed. Don't even worry about it. All right. So as you guys know, um, the format for Arena Kings is three minutes today. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and there's quite a few prizes. So first place prize gets $200. $200 second place gets $150. Third place gets $100. So a two-hour tournament. Somebody is going to be taking home uh, some of these money prizes. So it's going to be pretty fun. Yeah, anyways, we are actually going to see some very, very strong games. The format of Arena King tournaments and, um, you know, Arena tournaments in general is different from Swiss tournaments. Uh, fourth place does not get anything, unfortunately. There are, however, there are, however, an under 2,000 prize, which is 50 bucks. Uh, under 1,600, which, which is also 50 bucks. An under 2,100 prize which is also another 50 bucks. And there's also a streamer prize, which is a hundred bucks. So there's a lot of different ways you can win some money. Uh, if you aren't playing, everybody is welcome to play. And you know, in fact, I might just decide to play a few games myself, honestly. Depends on what you guys wanna see. Today is a fun event and I'm very excited to be hosting this. It's my first time hosting um, actually, it's not my first time. That that's not true. I, it's not my first time hosting a show by myself. But but it's definitely one of the rarer times of me hosting a show by myself. So yeah, if you guys want to see me play, just let me know. I'll jump into the pool. I have an blitz rating of around twenty three hundred. It's definitely dipped down a little bit from my highest of twenty four hundred. Actually, I want to talk about this position a little bit. Hikaru does not seem to be doing too well. I mean, it is an end game, so Black has to play very accurately. As we just saw, the eval bar is going to favor Black uh, just because of the placement of his pieces, which are a lot better than White. These knights are coordinated much more actively. Uh, the knights on G3 and F1 are pretty much being quite passive. So, you know, Gieko, we're just taking a look at their chess.com ratings. So don't even worry about it. It's whatever rating these players have in the tournament. Yeah, these knights are, are definitely not looking very good. They're not very useful. And this pin... Okay, so the thing about this is that white's rook is actually really passive. And knowing Ikaru, right? So as a reminder, it is a three-minute no-increment time control. We already have 514 players participating. Um, anybody can join at any time. You can also leave any time. Nobody is required to play the entirety of the event. However, if you join earlier, you're more likely to be scoring more points. So uh, do keep that in mind if you do want to join Arena Kings today. Um, and also there is... Uh, okay, so as I was saying, there's three minutes. Um, that does mean there is no increment, right? So Hikaru with 1 minute 25 is basically 40 seconds up on his opponent. And that is not very comfortable to be playing. It's not comfortable to be playing an endgame where you are down on time. So Hikaru is very likely actually going to win this position now. He is up a pawn. Man, this evil bar is just going crazy because now there's g4. And theoretically, this position is a draw. But with such little time on the clock, it is not very easy, right, for, for, for Black to hold this position. I'm sure all of us have actually played um, 
these kind of end games before where we think it's a draw. Okay, so once again, don't want to. If Hikari wants to play for a win, can't really play rook to a7. However, I do believe there are very little choices for. Okay, and they have drama repetition. So Hikaru and Yospam, the two highest rated players, both are streamers. For those of you who might not know, Yospam is also a streamer. And of course, Hikaru, we all know, is the very, very, very famous GM Hikaru, a very amazing person, player, and content creator. Um, all right, so let's jump into the next game. Here we have Hudinovic versus uncover opportunities and i mean white is up the exchange but he does actually have to find a way to to win the position or he can just you know okay i like this move i mean it doesn't actually do that much um because there is still the rook in fact there's actually rook takes f7 and if king takes f7 then there's queen b7 bring your queen out of the fork and then you'll be able to take back the queen next move so that is, you know, uh, a very nice tactic if if his opponent finds it. So let's see what happens. Okay, so White did not find it. However, Black only has three seconds on the clock. He has to pre-move every single move. Ooh, wait a minute. What, what did I just witness? Why did White just give away the queen? And Black has actually checkmated his opponent with 0.9 seconds on the clock. Wow. Okay, if that is not, you know, some serious, serious, um, just some intense gameplay, honestly. I, I don't even know what to say about that. I'm just like looking here, sitting here in shock that... You know, why was up so much time? He could have found the rook takes f7 move that I was showing you guys. And instead, he just decided to blunder his queen. Maybe try to flag his opponent because his opponent was definitely a little lower on time. But don't forget, most players above a 2500 rating know how to, you know, win being up a queen. And his opponent proved that he only needed three seconds to do that. So we definitely have some very, very strong bullet players here. All right, so we do see um, Iturizaga get a win over Krikor, and Krikor is a Portuguese language streamer, um, also part of the Chess.com team. So, all right, let's see how this 2800 is currently doing against Washwiz, who is 500 points lower rated than him. I'm not actually liking, I'm not actually liking this position too much um for for uh why i mean it is supposed to be theoretically a draw but maybe maybe brandon jacobson who is a grandmaster a very young grandmaster might i add um maybe he has a way to sort of swindle his opponent i mean end games are always really complicated so ooh, you never know right rec end games are one of the hardest end games to play properly so we'll definitely be we're already off to the start with some very intense games. And that's pretty interesting. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay. Rook takes a3, rook to b7, king to e8. Okay, we have passed pawns on the board. Let's see if any of these passed pawns might, you know, promote into a queen. <laughs> That would be honestly, honestly, what we would not want to see as black. Okay, so this quick king before move just is you know making this rook move to the side. Uh, as you know, trying to defend against pass pawns in end game usually means that you want to put the rook behind the pawn. Right, that is the number one idea. However, black is already a little bit late to doing that. Um, rook takes a3 looks very natural. I think this is now actually a win for white. And as I was just saying, we have, there's actually rook to a8 checkmate threat next move. And there's no way for black to stop rook to a8 upcoming. And it will be a simple promotion. So black is forced to give up the rook for the pass pawn. And this is why rook endgames are just so, so, so difficult to play. Um, because... You know, you just have to be very accurate. You make a mistake and all of a sudden your entire game is going downhill. 
All right, let's take a look at how some of our other title players are are go are playing. Um. Okay. Well, I just tuned into the game, and it's immediately okay. Well, Black is just up a knight and a bishop, and his opponent has uh, thus resigned. Okay. So, um, for those of you who might not know, the format of Arena Kings is based on a point system. Um, you get more points if you are on a winning streak. Alright. Okay, do we have any mods in the chat? Any mods? Would appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, okay. <laughs> Make a little... Come on, dragon, what are you doing? Why aren't you modding on this channel too? Any mod checks going on? Dude, some of these some of these usernames I'm just looking at I'm like, what's going on? Alright. So actually the side playing white is leading this um Arena Kings tournament at the moment. However, we're only pretty much like three games in. So one of the strategies for playing in Arena Kings is to try to play as many games as you can. Obviously, obviously winning is one of the um main ideas of chess but in arena kings if you can win faster that'll be even more awesome because then you can stack up your points right you, if you the more wins you get in an arena event the more points you have and sometimes that is exactly what you need to do just win and do it quick exactly just win fast just win very very fast um what better advice can I give you, you know, like, like you, you're asking for the, you're asking for the, wait, I am actually, I just realized something. Why is this on the wrong web page? What the heck? Um, yeah, I think it's the other one. Okay. Now when I switch tabs, oh, it still moves. Oh, I'm so confused. What? Okay, give me a sec. Technical issues, technical issues. Um, trying to figure this out. Sorry, give me a second. Okay, so I was copying, I, I had the wrong, I wanted to include the um, points, but I actually had the wrong layout. I was captured the wrong window. Okay, there we go. Now, now you guys can actually see clearly who is in first place in terms of points. And as always, the reminder is um, arena tournaments do not work like Swiss tournaments. The more points you have, the better. And the reason for this is because you can get on a winning streak. So then your points stack up. Yeah, thank you, Random S. I know. I mean, honestly, chess is a simple game. If you If you want to win, guess what you got to do? Take a wild, wild guess of what you have to do when you're trying to win. Like, what is the one secret chat? Come on, you guys can all say this. <laughs> Don't lose. Exactly. Okay, okay. Get good. Get good is also a good one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it is not to play fast and bad. That is not it. That is not what I'm trying to advocate here. Win some pieces. Don't lose your pieces. You can flag your opponents. You can try to checkmate them. Um, there's just so many things you can do in chess to help yourself get an advantage. But I think at the end of the day, just winning is the best advice you could ever take. You see, just winning is a step above everything else, right? If you win, then you're winning. So perfect. Yeah, don't avoid Boda's Gambit is also uh, another really good one to remember. All right, you know what? Watching these players play chess has made me decide that maybe I want to play a game as well. So actually, let's see how this goes. I don't think I've played Blitz in like the last couple of days, but, 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 but this should be pretty interesting. So I'm jumping in to the pool. So this is the perfect time for anybody who wants to snipe me. Um, no, actually, please do not snipe me on official commentary. That would be most unfortunate. 
I am avoiding streaming this event so I don't get sniped in the pool. And instead, people can just do it on official chess.com commentary. Yeah, thank you, Aizen. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, chess.com appreciates it too. On behalf of chess.com. Yeah, and if you guys are not familiar with who I am, uh, my name is Nemo. I am a woman grandmaster in chess. And I was your PogChamps uh, caster or commentator the other day. So you might have seen me on that. Thought I should be doing commentary. I am doing commentary. I'm doing commentary on my own game. Which I know is unfortunately probably not the level you want to be looking at, but I promise you, it's probably still a little bit better than what you can play. <laughs> Thank you, BGT. Appreciate it. <clears throat> so, you know, I, I know it's maybe not the level you want to see, but it's really not that bad either, you know? <laughs> So if you're looking for the highest level of gameplay, I'll show it to you guys in a minute. We're going to be tuning back into Hikaru, uh, roastingchess.com chat. So the thing is, I was told to have fun. Like when I asked for instructions to how to commentate today, I was told to have fun. I am having fun. Are you guys having fun? <laughs> I was just told to have fun. Like there were no other instructions given to me. And like I was just told to have fun. So I'm having fun. <laughs> I don't know what any I don't know. I'm actually not sure what was expected of me. So uh we're just here chilling. Alright, we actually won a game today. Wow, I got two whole points. Wait, what? No, I got 10 points. Okay, wait, so my rank is currently 161st. I, I won two points. So when you get a win in arena, you get two points and you also gain rating based on normal rating, right? So <laughs> I'm not being toxic on official commentary. I'm not. I'm not. That is not what's happening here. All right, let's see um, how Gascon Chess, who streams on YouTube, I believe, judging by his name, is currently doing. So, um, yeah, why is my profile picture of chess a challenger pick? We do not ask questions. I am going to choose to not respond to this one question. <laughs> I know I'm not challenger in League of Legends, but since I can't get challenger in League of Legends because I'm a little bit washed um i just have chosen to express my desire to be challenger in league on chess.com instead i mean i have to work to get challengers no I, i'm just busy doing other things though okay i don't like this move because e5 would have been really strong i don't know why i'm not sure why white did not play e5 i think um you know in these kind of positions you want to be playing with the tempo right a move like rook g8 is just defending this knight but if you play a move like e5, you're actually attacking your opponent's piece. Sorry, why did black not play e5? Why did black not play e5? Okay, come on, guys. Please. <laughs> Some help here. <laughs> um, so if e5, at first glance, it might, look, it might look like there's bishop takes e5. But in fact, you can play bishop takes e5. After knight takes e5, you can actually just castle and white's king is stuck in the middle of the board. And if you have been following perhaps some recent PogChamp students games, um, you might know that having a king in the middle of the board is not very Chad. Oh my god, this is comment commentary on which I can say Chad. I'm built different. I'm so happy right now. I'm actually so happy right now. I mean, I usually can't say that while on chess.com, on chess official chess.com commentary, but now I can because I was told I can have fun with it. So we're going to have lots of fun with this, guys. This will be very exciting. Um, okay, so white is completely winning here. I mean, it's just, it's such a painful position for black to play. I'm not actually sure why, once again, right? It was all about, you had to take that time to attack your opponent in the center and then cast yourself and then bring your rook out to attack your opponent's weak king. So black actually missed a very good chance to take the initiative. And once you miss one of those initiatives, unfortunately, your position might start going downhill. Okay, let's take a look at how 
Elham is currently doing against Grandmaster Tardotti. Tar Tartotti. When is Hikaru playing again? Uh, Hikaru is currently playing right now. He is. Thank you, Louis, for the tier one. Thank you. Welcome to the chess.com family. I'm actually not sure what people say when they come here. <laughs> Very funny, sniping Mike. Yeah, I hope chess.com doesn't fire me because I'm having fun with this commentary. I mean, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but Elham is actually a very, very a strong youngster from Norway. And I have personal experience having played at least 80 uh, bullet games against him, of which I probably have won five. So quite interesting gameplay coming over from him. I do like White's position more though. This bishop is not looking very good on g7. Not only is it blocked by its own pawn on f6, it's actually blocked by three more pawns along this diagonal. I have been playing chess for 18 years. 18. Um, yeah. Yes. Robert is definitely built different when it comes to doing professional chess commentary. Unfortunately, I am not the same level of as Robert when it comes to chess. However, I do aspire to uh, be as good as a chess player and, you know, caster as Robert someday. So here for white, bishop c2 would be really good. We're just going to trap this bishop here. And black is forced to retreat the queen in order to uh, leave a square for the bishop. So... <clears throat> Yes, Oriflame. This is the girl that blunders a lot with Irelia. Um, <laughs> can't spell chess without Hess for a reason. Exactly. How is Eric Hansen doing? My British accent just came out again. Uh, I'm gonna look through this entire... Oh, wait a minute. Who... Nope, that is not Eric Hansen. Um... um Wait, I'm scrolling through the entire list of players and trying to find Eric Hansen for you. Do I get to pick the game that you want to watch? Yeah, I do. Fun fact! I don't even need to watch games. I can also play. Okay, wait. I'm just taking a quick glance at these positions. Okay, so I'm playing against somebody who is 200 points higher rated than me. Alright, let's take a look. How this is going. Okay, well, my opponent has decided he is going to give me a slight time advantage uh, by not moving straight out of the opening. Wow, 12 seconds on move one. <laughs> okay, this is some impressive blitz gameplay coming from my opponent, uh, who is an Athena master from Iran. So the thing about Arena Kings is that you have three minutes to play your entire game. I'm not exactly sure what he is thinking about on the first two moves. When you're 2,500, usually the common um, conception is actually that you know how to play your openings. Now, of course, I don't want to speak for everybody. So maybe my opponent doesn't actually know how to play against the Sicilian. But usually they do. And usually I, I don't think I've seen somebody spend this much time on their first move in a while um <laughs> so it's okay maybe he's bming me maybe he just thinks he doesn't need the time out of the opening which is fair i honestly think that you know he, he could be a very very strong player and uh he really doesn't need the time but as a recommendation to everybody else who might be interested in playing you know in arena kings today or is already play i should not have played that move because now i just lose my bishop i, was, I should have taken with the bishop why didn't i take with the bishop um Commentating alone, Sag. No, it's fine to commentate alone. When I commentate alone, I can say whatever. Okay, I cannot say whatever I want to say. That is not true. That is false information. But I have more freedom over my choice of words. Because there is nobody here to tell me what to do. Yeah. Oh, wait, that's check. I was going to take the bishop, but then I realized I'm in check. Okay, so... Um, mm, mm, mm. oh my god, wait a minute. I thought I could play this, but I, I thought I could actually take this, but he has this. So I suppose this guy has actually smurfed on me a little bit with his tactics. Maybe his tactics is actually just better than mine. It's fine. Can't always be the best. I mean, I couldn't take that bishop because I would lose my rec, unfortunately. So, yeah. That is most unlucky. All right, we can take this pawn though.
I do not like my position. <laughs> this is a very uncomfortable position. I kind of regret roasting this guy earlier about his time usage because obviously he's just beating me on position. Like I have this really bad habit of trying to beat people um, in terms of time and that's a habit I have to fix myself. So once again, as a reminder, if you are trying to improve in chess, please play slower chess. Do not play bullet like me. All right, I can play this, I think. Yeah, I'm playing. I mean, I can play or commentate. I can pretty much do anything I want. I was told to have fun, go wild. So that's what I'm doing. All right, let's go here. Yeah, we're having fun. Thank you, Justin. I appreciate it. And uh, fun fact, at the same time that I'm playing, I can also go watch other people play. This is the best kind of casting, actually. You can play, watch others play, flame others while they're playing, and also lose your own games all at the same time. Wow, this is actually like... Okay, wait, I need to not get checkmated here. I feel like if I do that, it just won't go well. Okay, but if I go here, he can take back with the knight. But if I move the king, then, I mean, the square is just very free for him. Okay, let's go here. I don't like this position! Oh my god! Why do people want to checkmate me? That's not nice. Oh no, my rook. Yeah, maybe I just resigned this game. It's fine. It's okay. I only lost four points off that. My opponent was a bit higher rated than I am. It's okay. I I just messed up in the opening, honestly. Uh, that was not the game. Maybe maybe I just don't play. Maybe I just watch other people play. Mm. Oh no, my rook, yes. <laughs> oh my god, god can't save this position. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, this position was not very Chad. Yeah, so this is how I get my win rate. Okay, also, wait a second. I am looking, I'm hunting for, for, for people, who do you guys want to watch? Let me know what you guys, who you guys want to watch in the, um, wait, this guy's name is Chatere. I'm trying to find Hikaru's game. Okay, so as a fun fact, Chatere is, uh, four in Polish, and I'm actually not sure. Gata. Okay, I can try finding Gata too. Okay, wait. I will find them. I will find them. Oh, I found Gata. Oh, he's playing. Ga he's playing. Gata's playing a card right now. All right, we'll watch this game. I do not like Hikaru's position. Oh my god, that was brutal. Oof! That was actually brutal. Okay, let's actually take a look at this game because I think this one could have been really, really um, instructive. I want to know. I want to see what happened for um, Hikaru to get into such a bad position straight out of the opening. Yeah. Can we gamble? Chess.com mods. Can we gamble? Can we watch one of the top performing lower rated players? Yeah, that'll be pretty interesting to watch. Um. Okay. So. I mean, I'm not very fami familiar with this opening, so I'm not going to say too much about it. I just want to see where um, black actually went wrong. Sorry, where white went wrong. Okay, so bishop g7. Okay, I think in this position, white actually has the better position because um, just more space. I mean, this bishop is on a nice diagonal, but this bishop is also a nice diagonal. You got the d6 square for your knight upcoming in the future. Uh, this pawn will always be backwards, so this is a potential weakness. All right, so queen e2, and we can see the evil bar drop down a lot. All right, what is the reason for this, though? Why Why is queen e2 such a natural-looking developing move, or why is it just not correct in this situation? Okay, so on this move, it suggests for white to play either g4, g4, 
is the first choice, and it's a not a very natural move to make. I'm not going to lie. I mean, you but you're kicking your opponent's knight away from one of its be better squares, and then you can just start attacking. Like all of Black's pieces are still very much stuck at home, so you can actually play a little bit more aggressively uh, in these positions. But G4 definitely does feel very, very, very brave. So after Queen E2, the Evil Bar, as you can see, immediately drops down, and we do not like that for white. Okay, so rook to b1. I think Hikaru thought he had a little bit more time um, to do whatever he wants to do. And after a4, the knight is forced to go to a1 because if you go... Well, actually, I think knight bd2 was probably better. Um, but he wanted to play knight to c2 in order to get the knight into the center because the knight from d2 is blocking his dark sword bishop. Doesn't have a lot of potential, right? So that's why Hikaru probably wanted to play knight to a1. However, in this position, whoa, this was just, this is just pure tactics though. I mean, the knight is pinned, so it's definitely very uncomfortable, but I think you still had to go with a move like bishop d2, just developing, getting your rooks connected, because you guys will now see what happens when you don't connect your rooks. Okay, so knight to f6, right? Um, first of all, black cannot take, because the king is in check. So after queen takes f6, queen takes b7, there is queen to d4 check, and after king to h1, where's the fork, guys? What's the fork? Any any forkers in the chat? <laughs> yeah, queen to d3, exactly. So there's, I mean, there is knight to g3, but queen to d3 is the simple one, because you're actually forking the rook. Now, you might be like, oh, queen d3, what if I just move that bishop? But there's not really anywhere where you can put the bishop. If it goes to d2, you just take it. If the bishop goes to e3, it's going to be a free bishop. And at the 2900 or 3000 level, rather, um, it's very difficult to hold those positions. So uh, Hikaru justly resigned. And for those of you who don't know, Gata Komsky does stream as well. I mean, Hikaru streams, but I'm sure every single one of you guys knows that already. So I don't want to uh, sound like... What's the word for it? Not a broken telephone. Record. I don't want to sound like a broken record. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. I appreciate you guys helping with my English. I am sorry. English is not my first language. <clears throat> okay. So I was actually taught how to play this opening the other day um, by my coach, Chess Weave, who is in the chat. Once again, another shout out. Um, but this is one of those openings where um, Black has to play quite actively in order to stay in the game because, okay, this is very good, d6, c5. Yeah, my first language is Polish, yep. So it's totally okay. Um, the results actualized? No, the results are not, well, the results are there, but the results are based off of the arena uh, point system, which does not work like in it does not work like the Swiss system. So you actually get more points for the more amount of games you win in a row. So yeah, um, but this opening is an opening in which Black has to play very actively. So White's weakness is obviously going to be the e4 pawn at some point. Black wants to potentially put the knight onto e5. I'm not a fan of this queen d7 move actually. And the reason for this is because I think the knight belongs to knight b6, the knight d4. 7 in order to support the knight from c4 dropping back to e5. These are very common ideas actually in a line similar to this called the Zaitsev, which is an, a Spanish opening where you don't play g6. So, Chitere. How come I don't have any accent? I have a very scuffed accent, don't even worry about it. And that is why I'm saying, as you can see, the eval bar is looking pretty happy for white um, because now the knight has to take a very long trip to e5 and actually it's going to be difficult to get there. So I don't really like this b3 move because it does actually help black play c4. Instead, I think white here should have maybe just played, um, for example... Actually, it's it's not that easy to find a move for white to play. I would maybe play knight f1, knight to e3, and knight to g4, just trying to undermine the black bishop on e5, as well as bring another attacking piece over. But once again, it is blitz. And Eric is oh, Eric only has one minute and twenty seconds left on clock while Hikaru still has a full two minutes. So 
<laughs> Guys, <laughs> let's chill in the chat, please. I am partly Canadian, partly Polish, partly a lot of things, and it's totally okay. We can be a lot of things. Um, <laughs> one of the uh, producers for Jets.com actually just flamed me for not having music on the starting screen. I just couldn't even think of... I, didn't, I couldn't figure out how to put the music on, so don't even worry about it. All right. Night is on F5. Now, this could look very scary, but actually, all Black needed to do was play Queen to D8. Queen C7 is not as good because you actually let White play Queen to H4. And if you think that you can take this pawn... You will be very disappointed because there will be checkmate. Yes, I am actually aware of what a vinyl record is. Thank you. Um, I know I'm a zoomer, but I am not born in 2010. I have seen a vinyl record in my life. Okay, once again, not really a big fan of the move like F6 because um, this just weakens Black's position and this bishop is not going to be how's it pronounced is it not vinyl 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 okay once again guys i am not a fluent english speaker english is not my first language i am i'm trying out here vinyl it's fine don't worry about it it's okay last one right vinyl okay vinyl Okay, so this Black King is gonna go on a little bit of a run. Ah, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do we see how the evil bar is going in Black's favor? Yeah, I don't know why either. I'm just looking at the position. This is going too fast for me, honestly. I mean, I'm trying to understand, but I have no idea why the evil bar suddenly went that way. Okay, well, this is not looking good anymore because this pawn... Um on e6 is going to be very restricting a very nice pass pawn e7 e8 is a very normal plan and however eric only has 13 seconds to figure out how to win this position i wonder if he just goes for the draw now hikaru actually says no he does not want to take the draw he wants to win um and white has lost a lot of his advantage actually the moment you start playing defensively in bullet is the moment when never mind as i said that i believe hikaru has actually just blundered so after d takes e3 this might look like a free rook e7 then we got bishop to h5 we promote into a queen but with four seconds on the clock let's see if eric knows how to finish off this Okay, so um, just as I was complimenting Eric Hansen's amazing bullet skills, he decided to blunder his queen. Which, guys, we all know is called the Boda's Gambit, right? The Boda's Gambit just happened. And we can see that not, every, not, not, not even grandmasters are immune to Boda's Gambits. And on that note, I will actually play another game because I want to forget about what just happened and what I saw. What happened? Yeah, don't worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go play my own game. It's okay. And hopefully we will not see a bonus gambit of my own. But for those of you who do not know, uh, Eric Hansen streams over at Chessbra TV. I think I just blundered a queen. I mean, not a queen. I think I blundered a pawn straight out of the opening. Uh, B3 was probably not the correct move there. It was probably F3 instead. Or just bishop to E3. Just not pushing up the B3 pawn. So... Um, it's okay. It's fine. Everything is fine. Um, maybe I can play this and then he takes and I can take here. I mean, this position is going to be real, really scuffed, but like, it should be okay. I'll survive. Okay, so I can't play f3 here because if I play f3, I'll never get to castle. However, now I'm also a little bit scared about castling because, um... Actually, I should play bishop to e7 instead of bishop. No, bishop to d3 had the idea of protecting my e4 pawn. This should be fine. It should be all right. So I'm moving my king in in order to push up this pawn. This pawn is protected twice. So I don't really have to be afraid of any knight moves. And I really just want to play e5 and then put my queen over to h5. And what is the main idea in chess, guys? 
What do we want to do in chess? We want to win, exactly. There we go. Yep, just win. Take the king, yeah, that too, that also works. But most of the time we want to just win. Or win by any kind of winning is fine. It doesn't matter how you win, as long as you win. All right, ma check. <laughs> is it my, I don't even know what's happening. It's fine, I'm just gonna focus on my game. I want to win. Ah! Oh wait, I'm off on official broadcast. I keep forgetting about that. Mm, if I go here, I want to keep this file closed, but he might play e4. So, <clears throat> I do not actually like this move. I hope he does not see it. Thank you. He did not see it. Now, we just go for his king. I mean, it's a little bit difficult because my light square bishop is actually closed off. And if I play this, he can just take. Ah, oh, that's so annoying. Okay, wait, I can take with the rook, though, and then I get a tempo off of his bishop. So. Um. All right. I mean, I can go here, and then there's this. I mean, this looks passable. Or I can just retreat my bishop. I think retreating the bishop is probably a better idea. He might take this. But I can go here and maybe play that. Okay. <laughs> Boot thumb, exactly. All right, if I go here, there'll be that. But I think it's still okay. Even though, even though if he plays this, I can't take here because there's knight takes with a check. Um, I'm going to play queen to... No, wait. I'm going to play bishop takes d6. Because I can threaten... This is like a fork. This is like the wooden shield. Alright, I can take here now. I have a free rook. I'm up a whole rook up. And he just resigns. Alright, let's go. I am yoinking people's ratings. Okay, let's go back to looking at some higher level gameplay. My games are not that interesting, I'm aware. Um... Okay, so let's- I found Hikaru. Wait, I found Hikaru. I found Hikaru. I found Hikaru. Where's he- where did Hikaru go? You know what? I'm just gonna follow Hikaru. Okay, there we go. Found Hikaru. Yo, thank you, Nymphy. I appreciate that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Alright, let's see what Hikaru is doing. He is winning against the 2200. Um, his opponent's face emote flare thing definitely shows- what his <clears throat> what his position is kind of like i mean what at first glance it might not look like black's position is that bad because it is more or less equal pawns but white has a white has a little bit better pawn structure and this pawn at h6 is going to be very difficult to defend as well as you know um okay bishop to h7 is very very accurate i mean this pawn is also going to be very free next move Refresh tournament standings. Oh, you are correct. Thank you for reminding me. Oops. Oops, oops, oops. I'm sorry. Okay, there we go. So currently we actually have a 665 rated player in first place with 14.5 out of 16. Um, as Hikaru is going to win this game, maybe we drop in and take a look at how this very chad 600 rated guy is currently playing and for those of you who are perhaps not aware the way that arena tournaments work is not that you if even if you have a lot of points you might not you will probably not play against Hikaru you're more likely to play against people who are similarly rated to you um <laughs> so you know oh my oh my <laughs> This evil bar, man. The evil bar is literally going and then going back down. 
Yeah, the evil bar is uh, definitely. There's a lot of things happening over here with the evil bar. The evil, the evil sine wave is in progress over here. Um, but yeah, so once again, this 600 rated is probably playing like a 600 rated. It's just he's playing people who are equally as talented as he is in the game. So as long as you're aware of the fact that people who are 600 are playing people who are also 600, you'll realize that the chances of this man's, you know, winning most of his games is not entirely that unlikely. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> I mean, it's going to be pretty interesting to actually see how some of these players are playing. 1732 versus another 1768, as you can tell. It's very unlikely for a 1700 rated player to be playing against Hikaru. Um, and this is a very painful position for White to play. But I think once the bishop goes back, White's idea should be just to exchange off the knight. And then just exchange off the queens. Because if you cannot castle, if your king is... Okay, I am not sure why on this move, his opponent just took back on the bishop, but you can just take the knight. But tactics is difficult, especially for 700 rated players. It's not a worry at all. Okay, um, no, I'm not having a seizure at all. Everything's going perfectly fine, but we will, however... Come watch this game between Gata and Ming. Um, for those of you who are not aware, once again, Gata Komsky streams and so does Ming. Uh, I believe Ming is GM Ming Lei, his Twitch channel. However, he is not a GM yet, but he is a very, very strong international master who is working towards his um, Grand Master title. So, yeah. <clears throat> I mean... Chess is entertaining at all levels just for different reasons and there is nothing wrong at all with that. I do like White's position a little bit more here, I think. I mean, I just loaded the board and it was we were just watching from Black's point of view, but um I think White's position is just a little bit more a little bit easier to play because most of Black's pieces are still stuck on the back rank and that is not fun, right? We definitely want to be um trying to get our pieces active and all of that so dress for the job you want how do i dress like i want to be a professional league player <laughs> i actually just today understood the bakai mitai memes um so i actually have now learned i'm gonna create my own bakai mitai video tonight it's gonna be a good time Challenger helmet? Yeah, this is true. Maybe I can get a challenger backpack as well. Alright. COG uniform? This is true. Yep. Mm, first of all, I prefer being called Nemo. Thank you very much. My rating in chess in Fide is 2,227. On chess.com, my bullet rating is 2,520. Oh, that's kind of cool actually for you. Yeah, you're right. Yes, dress for what he wants. Exactly. Oh, that is so smart. He wants to become a grandmaster, so he's going to put the grandmaster in his Twitch name before he even gets it. That is genius. All right, I like this pin a lot. Um, and this is actually not a great move. As you can see, the evil bar just went brrr. Um, and the reason for this is because you don't have to take... You can move your queen away. And this queen is still stuck to um, protecting this rook. Yeah, Gata is definitely in great shape with his tactics today. Definitely, for sure. A lot of... Oh, what the? Wait, why not the... I mean, whatever you want to take is winning. But there was also a free queen. Which is, you know, both are winning, which is fine. It's just the queen. He says he misclicked. Okay. He misclicked, but it is still very much winning. Man, it's just 
Imagine how nice of a position you must have if everything you do is winning. All right, on that note, let's go take a look at how Hikaru is currently doing against a candidate master um, from Argentina. No, wait, I'm gonna go click. Yes, it's Argentina. Oh my God. <laughs> it took me, like, I was so nervous that, like, I got the flag wrong in front of, like, 5,000 people. But thank God my geography lessons paid off from when I was in high school. Oh my God. I was, like, so nervous because I just, like, <laughs> no Argentina on map. I actually know where Argentina is on the map. It took me a moment there, but this is definitely a very winning position for Hikaru. And. Um, I mean, this is just painful for, for, for Black to play. <laughs> Hikaru is so funny. He's just going to go straight for checkmate. Hello to Argentina. Yeah, this is a very Chad move. We're just going straight for checkmate. This is pretty beautiful, actually. Mm -hmm. Awesome stuff. All right. Hello from Argentina also. Hello. Wait, there's a lot of Argentinians today. Um, okay, what's a Chad? A Chad is somebody who is built different. Okay, I like this guy's username. His name is Chess Lover. What's my match against Rosen? This is a good question. I'll ask Rosen. Okay, wait, let me ask Rosen right now. Mm. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I do type quite fast. Don't worry. I am still looking at the games. Wait, who, what did I want to do? I forgot what I wanted to do. Oh, it's fine. All right. Just figuring some things out. No sweat. All right, Hikaru's position is definitely interesting. Um, I do not like h5. These tactics are very difficult to spot, but there's a really good move here actually for white. I mean, bishop to bishop takes h5 might look pretty natural um, to some people, but you do have to do a little bit of analysis and calculation. This move doesn't actually work because of knight g to f3, after which g takes f3, queen takes h4, queen takes h4, this knight takes f3, and then you get the queen back. However, you do not have to take the pawn, and you can just move king to h1. Wait, what? Wait, as I was analyzing that game, what happened? Wait, exactly what I analyzed happened. But I was telling white should not do that, you know? Like, white should not do that. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, sometimes it happens, you know? I guess sometimes we can see into the future, and that just that just definitely happens. It's okay, I'm the new prophet, except I don't want to take that title from Danya, because Danya is definitely a lot better at predicting what people do than I am. But it is what it is. Sometimes, you know, you think you have a tactic, but you actually do not have that tactic. And it just sometimes happens. It's okay. All right. What is going on in this game? So we have a very classic um, castling on opposite sides position. This game is going to be very instructive because how, what do you do if you've castled on opposite sides? What do you guys usually do?
any anybody who actually you know plays a little bit of chess here who know, who, who knows pawn storms exactly you'll get pawn storms so it's usually a very good idea to start moving your pawns off the board and that's exactly what we're going to see both of these players playing and the evil bar just favors black a lot of the moment but I do want to say, in super aggressive positions, looking at the evil bar is probably not the most accurate way to um, understand the position because these positions are very complicated. And when you are playing with two minutes on the clock, you never know what might happen. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit risky for white. Um, I was actually looking at if knight takes b2 works, um, but after bishop takes b2, queen takes c2, there is not much attack for black after this. So it's actually better to not take on b2. Instead, just push up a5. Um, Alright, so a5. Guess what? Black's next move will be chat. Take a wild, wild, wild guess. Okay, well, he played it too fast for you guys to even respond. But a4. Pawn storms moving up. White has not even had time to play g5 yet. And at this point, I'm not even sure if white wants to play g5 because he is so focused on just defending all of his pawns and, you know, his king side in general. So it is actually interesting to see um, how this position is looking very, very favorable for black. And it's not very often that you actually are able to put Hikaru into one of these defending positions. I mean, we just saw pretty much a tactical brilliancy from him last move. So Hikaru is going to try to strike back with a move like G5. And... I forgot what I was going to say. Thank you, whatever name, for the tier 1, though. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I just completely lost my train of thought. Dude, I don't know. <laughs> oh my god, okay. I don't like e5. This just lets white's knight come here. Why not just play b3? He should play b3 here. He should play b3. b3 is very natural. Like, if you're attacking, you don't need to play moves in other places, right? You can just attack. Oh, the queens just came off the board. Oof. Especially because e5 actually makes you exchange queens. That's even less favorable for black because I don't know if black realized, but he has actually the at better attack here. You know, he's got how many pieces? One, two. Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this would have been a really, really good move. He has six pieces attacking. Meanwhile, white has pretty much one, two, three, four. Um, so it's going to be a little bit difficult now for black to try to win this game. However, he is still better after rook takes e8. The pawn on h6 will be dropping someday. And, um, the position in general is just more active for black. And whenever you're playing into an end game, you want to definitely be active. You want to be an active player. You definitely don't want to be playing passively. Thank you, Berks. Thank you. I appreciate it. I wish Hess was with me here today, but I do hope he is... Um, taking a little bit of break. All right, so let's take a look at if there's anything uh, in particular happening. I mean, I'm kind of interested in following this game all the way to the end. Caster only has 24 seconds left on the clock. Not great against Hikaru's one minute, who is obviously one of the best bullet players in the world. I'd be very scared to be playing Hikaru with only 16 seconds on the clock. Um, all right. Well, this is looking like a win for white. This is definitely not favorable for black anymore. These pawns are... White, white's just going to have a big pawn advantage after all these pawns drop off. And with only 9 seconds on the clock, I think it's safe to say that Caster will be taking the loss this game. But that just goes to show, you know, you can get winning positions against Grandmasters, Super Grandmasters like Ikaru. But if you can't win, that's what... That's the difference between a Super Grandmaster and a normal Grandmaster, you know? However... All the props still to Mr. Caster. Nothing wrong with being only a Grandmaster. Alright, so Hikaru is actually going to play one of my Canadian brethren. So let's take a look at this game. Probably saying his opponent misplayed this. Yeah, I mean, his opponent did misplay that. <laughs> I mean, it's okay to be a normal Grandmaster. Like, it's okay to be any level chess player. There is nothing wrong... With being a person. Like, it's okay to just exist as well. You don't even need to be a grandmaster. You don't even need to be good at chess. It's okay to just exist. 
All right. As a reminder, it's fine if you're just living. <laughs> yeah, really. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, Hikaru is like a normal Grandmaster is 15, so it's very hard to outdo that for sure. This is one of those games where I feel like... Um, Anton, I believe, I believe uh, the Fide Master from Canada, his name is Anton. He's a very young kid as well. He's playing pretty well. Good game so far. It's a bit, it's a bit of a weird position because both sides are probably wondering, hmm, where should I castle? I'm probably waiting for the other opponent, your their opponent to castle before they do, because it's hard to make a choice, right? If you castle one side, or you know, you just shouldn't castle at all. Like, what's the choice here? However, I think in this position, the best play for both sides is to play like Sir Dosh and just don't castle. Just leave your king in the middle of the board. Because if you castle on this side, this pawn's obviously weak. If you castle on this side, there's like an open foul on you. I mean, same happens to black, right? So keeping the king in the center is not always the worst idea. Not always the worst idea. Um, you do sometimes need to keep in mind that just because your king's in the center of the board does not mean it can be attacked because... A king is only unsafe if it gets attacked. So hopefully we do not see a king walk though. That's the one thing I do not want to see today. <laughs> Everyone here knows who Sir Dosh is. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right, let's go. No, do not. Please do not activate your king in the center of the board. That's the one thing I do not want to witness today. Are the red dots last week's finishing positions? No, so the red dots that you're actually going to see um, are the current... Wait, you mean the little fire thing, right? Those are actually the win streak they're on. So I think if it's like fire 8, that means they're on an 8 game win streak. Yes, okay, thank you chat for confirming for me. I appreciate it. And the point system is um, not like a Swiss tournament. So, for example, if first place has 18.5 out of 21, um, I'm actually not sure what it means, but hey, guys, the man has 61 points. He's in the lead because 61 is a larger number than 46. All right. This is looking like a very, very good position for white. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't actually know. <laughs> I'm not actually sure. <laughs> um, okay, well, I mean, why is just gonna take away this win, guys? Look. <laughs> what just happened this game? Okay, so, okay, that was a loss for Anthony. Hikaru definitely played a really good game. Okay, let's take a break from watching Hikaru's game because we know he is going to be... Probably smurfing on his opponent a little bit. Let's actually go take a look at how uh, Mr. Haynes is, M. Haynes is currently doing. This 688 rated guy is um, popping off a little bit. I mean, this evil bar just does not like the position. Okay, he did not play knight, bishop to e3, which takes a free knight. And his position for is not looking, like his position looks pretty good. But I mean, knights are very tricky in end games. But so are bishops. He definitely has the advantage here with a pair of bishops. Um, but he has four pawn islands, which is actually the most amount. <laughs> Pretty much not. Um, oh my god, that's just a free night. Okay, so if he doesn't play bishop to d6, or okay, rook to e7 is at least protecting this bishop. Um, okay. All right, well, he's playing some good moves, but I mean, even so, it's not completely over for white. There's definitely a lot of chances. <clears throat> okay, so knight takes e7, or even knight takes, knight takes f4 was probably better, because then you would um, get more material. You would actually get two bishops. Okay. White is trying to hold on, but I think Haynes is just too strong. He'll probably take the win really easily. Let's take a look at how third place is doing. Third place is uh, National Master, the chess coach.
All right. The chess coach. This just reminds me of a friend whose name is Fake Chess Coach. Pretty similar. I think he's just talented rookie, honestly, Nico. I like I've seen his games a little bit now, and he plays like a regular six hundred rated player. It's just apparently the eight hundred players are playing a little bit worse than eight hundred, so uh, it's okay. I mean, you never really know what to expect when you watch six hundreds play chess. So I like to not think too much into anything. And don't worry, chess.com is doing everything in the background to ensure fair play. They do an amazing job of it. Who is this? I am not sure who this is. Are you talking about me or the people we're watching? So once again, the way that arena tournaments work um, is not the way a Swiss tournament works. Um... Basically what happens in arena tournaments is that you play against people who are always kind of the same rating as you So you don't a 600 is never gonna play against Hikaru um, Even a 1700 is probably never gonna play against Hikaru So the chances of playing against people who are outside your rating range is very very low and you win points by being on a win streak so It's just a different system uh, from Swiss tournaments Yeah it's uh, it works completely different. So just because a six hundred can look like he's playing absolutely amazing, it does not mean that he is you know all of a sudden better than Hikaru. That's not what it means. It just means that he is better than other six hundred rated players, which is you know it can be a bit of a flex for him, but it's still cooler to be Hikaru, right? Still cooler to be Hikaru. It's okay. Uh, however. I think this position is actually going to go towards a draw. I mean, there's no way for, for White to kick this knight out of d5. The knight just stays on d5 and make sure he doesn't, you know, lose. If he doesn't lose the c6 pawn, I think it's going to be a pretty easy draw. Yeah, maybe he's going to be an 800 player. True, maybe he's gaining a lot of rating from this tournament. Yes. Is there a Nigerian prodigy? Is this somebody that chat is familiar with? Okay, actually, I kind of want to see how white wins this game because black actually messed up a lot. This is this is exactly what I did not like seeing kings doing. How do people sign up for Arena Kings? So you go to chess.com slash live and on the tournaments tab, there will be Arena Kings and everybody can play. So... As an example, you can. I'm just gonna click my next game, and I'm gonna play against somebody who is called Grandmaster for life, even though he's only a national master. So, I definitely do hope that this guy lives for a little bit longer and eventually maybe gets his Grandmaster title, so he can actually feel accomplished. Um, but you can basically just, you know, click the play button, and it's not, and it, it's open to everybody. Not everybody can win prizes. I'm not 100% sure about how this works, actually, so please do not quote me on it. But there are different section prices, um, and I think streamers win main prizes. Chess.com, help. Any help here? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lil Neko. I hope you live as well. Let's. I wish everybody a good health. Yeah, FIDE Master is better than National Master. Uh, National Master is actually mostly an U.S. specific title, unless I'm wrong. Am I? Is National Master mostly just a U.S. specific title? I know Candidate Master is available to other countries, but I am pretty sure. That um, that uh, the 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 Canadian Masters is open to everywhere, but National Masters is only available to the U.S. I'm hosting and also playing at the same time. I'm allowed to do whatever I feel like doing, including saying the word "chat" on stream, which I've been meaning to do for a really long time. What is going on? Yo, chill, buddy, chill. Dude, why is he like being so aggressive against the, the, the cast there? Yo, can you imagine playing a league tournament or like a chess tournament and you're just allowed to like stream during it and you can cast your own games? 
Is that the future of like over the board tournament chess? I feel like that would be so interesting. Like that would be so interesting. I mean, obviously, if you want to play serious, you probably shouldn't. But like in terms of entertainment value, um, I don't know a lot of things. But guess not watching the stream. Yeah, you'll find that the common trend on my streams, and when I cast this, I don't really know what's going on. But hey, you don't really need to know what's going on to live a fulfilling life. All right, I think I got checkmate here. Not just the USS NM, but not every country has it. Okay. Understood. All right, we got another plus 10 points. Wow. I'm actually not doing bad in the arena tournament. I mean, I'm not playing a lot of games because I'm obviously uh, commentating on games as I go along. Oh, Hikaru is playing Eric Hansen again. So, yeah, I did make his king walk for sure. That definitely felt like I was playing Sardosh again. Um, but this is not a comfortable position for Hikaru. And as I said, we already saw Eric Hans Hansen play... Hansen, Hansen, Eric Hansen, <laughs> play against Hikaru a little bit earlier. So as I've mentioned, um, when you are this high rated, there's really only three other people that you can play with. So, hey, Star Eagle, thank you for the tier. Welcome back to your 25th month. You are an OG. You're an OG for sure. Um, okay. The evil bar is going brr. Dude, what is happening with Hikaru's king? This is not Eric Rosen. This is Eric Hansen, by the way. I mean, Hikaru is not having the best position out of these openings. And the tactics has been looking a bit rough for him. But he, like, just to show how good of a player he is, he is still at second rank. Um, he is not playing against Eric. Oh well, I mean that's true. He is playing. He's playing a lot of tournament of games against Eric Hansen because think about it this way: when there's only ten people who are Hikaru's level on Chess.com, guess who's gonna, he's gonna end up playing against? You know, all you gotta know about the difference between Eric Rosen and Eric Hansen is that Eric Rosen is a very very quiet. Um, well, he's not very quiet, but he's very mellow and he's very relaxed, and has a very um british sense of humor but eric hansen is the total different uh, the total opposite of eric rosen and eric hansen is a bit louder a bit more no you're right dude you're right he's actually very mellowed and relaxed all the time yes yes um eric hansen is definitely very very relaxed the most chill guy i have ever met in my life um <laughs> so I mean, he's pretty, he can be pretty loud. He's, he's, uh, he, he, they're both pretty cool people. Amon's a loud one. They're both kind of loud. Okay, maybe I just, maybe I'm just describing something else. <laughs> maybe I'm just describing somebody else. Black has actually won by resignation. Yeah, this is a painful position for Black to, for White to play. I mean, I can't see a single move here for Hikaru, so. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I have kind eyes. Yeah, you haven't played chess or league against me then. You are missing a large part of uh, my streams, I would assume. If somebody tells me I am kind, <laughs> yeah, definitely not the first word I would use to describe myself. Eric Hans Eric Rosen is pretty chill, right? <laughs> Same British sense of humor. Okay, I mean, Ming is gonna just win this game. He's just up material. Oh, I guess there are different titles. I mean, different countries kind of- Oh, G5. G5 is a really good move here. We're just going to uh, take this bishop really soon. Can we see the second rank player? Yes, we can. We can definitely take a look. Okay, he is from Nigeria. Alright, he's playing as somebody who also wishes to be a grandmaster, evidently. Dressing for the job that we want. Um... I mean, judging by his profile picture, he looks like he's a little bit too old to become a grandmaster. But hey, everybody is allowed to have goals in life. You know, as long as you have something to strive for, I think that's a good thing. I think that's pretty encouraging. <clears throat> okay, uh, I like white's position significantly more. I mean, black does have this pawn. But it's actually equal pawns, and white's just gonna bring the- I mean, I don't even like this move that much, because I know it's a free pawn, but in these positions, I think you should actually be keeping the position like this, because there's no way for this bishop to go, right? 
So what you should actually be doing is bring your pieces over. Just going for the king because there's nothing black can do. Like three of his pieces are just out of the game. So I think it would be a lot better to actually not take that pawn, even though this position is totally winning because black did something which is uh, which does not pertain to his wannabe grandmaster status. I do not like trading queens in this position. Once again, you're just better. Just go for checkmate. Like, if you checkmate your opponent, there is no way for them to come back, right? Yeah. He's on a raiding climb? Yeah, we'll watch him a little bit. Um, but yeah, you don't really want to be- I mean, black should have swapped off the queens. Okay, this is just looking brutal. This is looking very brutal. White is doing very well. Yeah, I mean, just checkmate. Just win. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, let's- I want to see how white finishes off this game. Yeah, yogurt. Big quotes coming from your caster. Every time I say caster now, I just think of a caster minion. Smaller may would look really nice here. Okay, so queen a1, there's gonna be knight to h6, and then queen to g8. Do you guys know what a smaller mate is? What does the number that brackets mean behind their names? That's their ratings. Okay, so his opponent actually played the right move with king to f8. There will be no smaller mate, however, it's still a very painful position. And I mean, it's just checkmate next move. So um, I guess the talent from Nigeria has actually won his game. Okay, so we're just looking at Hikaru. All right, let's take a look at how M. Haynes is doing. He is perhaps the viewer's choice. Oh, he's actually not playing right now. You know what? Since he's not playing right now, let me actually queue up my... Sorry, what are the chances I just play into Ben Feingold? in the arena like i came to have a good time and not play grandmasters while casting a tournament but instead i somehow just got into oh my god <laughs> i mean i mean i really just didn't ask for this you know like i i came to have a good time and not to feel attacked this is already not a great position for me Oof. <laughs> yeah, this is looking a little rough. Okay, maybe I can go here and just give up the pawn so I just don't get attacked. When I go here, he plays this, I can go here. No, I'm gonna take this first. Then... I'm gonna go here, because if he takes this, I don't want him to be able to take here with the rook, so I can go here next. This is looking very scary, but I maybe I have queen here, but then even then he can take that. No, this doesn't work because it gets my knight at the end of it all. Oh, it's fine. Okay, I'm just gonna lose all my pawns, I guess. Definitely not a great position for me, but it's okay. My king is on a walk for sure. Okay, I'm just gonna play like Sardosh, it's fine. Okay, guys, 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 I'm doing it for content at this point. I mean, I'm, I've lost the position. Let's just park our king in the middle of the board and hope for the best. It's okay. This is just, um, this is, this is just for Sir Dosh. It's okay. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> We're just paying homage to my favorite student. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm just activating my king. Yeah, that's what this is. King is safe in the middle of the board sometimes. Oh my god, this is so painful. Please get me out. Yeah, this is uh just rough.
This is just not good. Okay, I should just resign this game. Man, why am I playing to a grandmaster? Like, I, I was just having a good time. I was really just having a good time. Actually, I kind of want to know where I made my mistake. Okay, so... Um... Barely a grandmaster. I'm a woman grandmaster, not quite a grandmaster. All right, let's take a look. So here, 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 here. Can I press the analysis port? Oh my god, this is gonna scuff up my whole layout, isn't it? Oh, it's actually not that bad. Okay, let's go back. Okay, so maybe maybe bishop here is not the move. I think that's maybe too slow. Just go castle, bishop out, and then knight here. I think that would be a lot better. Because after castling, he definitely gets a little bit more of an attack. Um, I could have gone rook to e8. Okay, so c5 is maybe not the way to go. No, actually, the engine doesn't even think this that bad. C takes d4, knight takes d4, not bad. Playing low rated players, that hurts. Yeah, true, I'm very low rated. Don't worry. I'm still okay here, but I think the tactic is just too difficult for me to find. Knight to h5 is okay, but h takes g5 is actually more accurate. I mean, I was very scared of playing this move because it just looks like my entire king side is um, being exposed. But... Apparently, I'm just not getting checkmate. I can just play rook c8 and I'll be fine. Okay. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Alright, so I think M. Haynes is actually going to take his first loss of today. Um, against Adidas Woody. Adidas Woody. Wait. His opponent just flagged. Never mind. M. Haynes is still on a roll because his opponents are apparently, he is apparently just a built better 700 rated players. Oh, M. Haynes has had two losses. Okay, he's already ha he's had two losses, so he's actually not um on a. He hasn't lost. He, oh, what am I trying to say? He hasn't. He doesn't have. <sighs> What's the word? He doesn't have an. No, I'm looking for a word. <laughs> He is not undefeated. Thank you, Artemis. Thank you. He is not undefeated. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> That's the word I wanted. <laughs> he is not undefeated. There we go. There we go. Um, okay, awesome. We we got we got the words through. <laughs> yeah, we know Polish is my first language, exactly. Nah, English is too difficult. English is too difficult. We're on Chess TV. Well, fun fact, we're also on the official chess.com broadcast, so. Yes. <laughs> we can speak. Oh no, that's just chick mate upcoming. Queen takes g2. I mean, in this this position is hard, but like, I suppose you just have to go queen e4. But still, anything you play loses. All right, let's skip that game because it's probably over. Let's see how M. Haynes is actually going to win against an Indonesian player, not the Polish. Not a Polish player, guys. Indonesia's flag has red on top. White on bottom, and Poland's flag has red on bottom, white on top. Flag lesson while we're at it. So, um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, confuse, confusion. Oh, in before Mo Monaco. Monaco's flag is a little bit more squished, so. <laughs> Alright, we got queen e6, king to e8, and... As long as White brings out the rest of his pieces, this game should be winning. Now, the real question is, is White going to try to win this game with only a queen and a rook? No! For why? Okay, I mean, that works too, but like... Ah, uh, I mean, okay, it's fine. Like, if, if he had just kept the queen on the board, like, literally just kept the queen on the board and just played d4, like, Black has no moves. Like, if the queen goes here, it's just checkmate. So, um, I mean, in this position, everything's winning, but oh my god. Okay, please do not play king h1. Just not king h1. Okay, king to f1. Okay, let's go. I, dude, what is this piece? What, what are these?
this is why this is why I wanted to say that he probably he probably okay this is why I say if you checkmate your opponent there's no way for them to checkmate you right this is why I've got it got into practice instead of trying to take material just try to checkmate your opponent like if you just try to checkmate your if you just checkmate your opponent he, they can't checkmate you understood yes i mean it's okay it happens sometimes but that is painful man he might lose his first place spot to hikaru if hikaru you know uh wins a few more games yeah uh 600 play rated on first place as a reminder in arena tournaments you do not play you do not play against people who are much higher rated than you so M. Haynes will never ever play against Hikaru. He's only going to be playing against people who are as good as he is in chess, which in his case is um, not extremely good. So that's why he is actually in first. He's just uh, happens to be better than most other 600 rated players. That's just the way that arenas are created. Hikaru's at a disadvantage. Well, if you think about it this way, Hikaru is actually always going to be playing people lower rated than him. So technically, he should be winning those two, right? But I can understand that. What is an arena tournament? An arena tournament is an event where um, basically you get points for wins. And if you win multiple games in a row, you get bonus points. It's just a different format that only exists online. Yeah. It's uh, it's it only exists online. There's no arena tournaments in person, but arena events are a lot more convenient for people because, for example, if I feel like playing a game right now, even though I'm casting, I can press next game and I can just jump into a game. And if I just don't want to play, I cannot play. So these kind of events are very convenient. How often are these events? They are bi-weekly with different formats and they have been running since January. So they're they're we know bi-weekly means it happens every two weeks so it's actually i'm just gonna say it happens every twice a week twice a week i don't know what i'm trying to say it happens twice a week what's the reward so first place gets 200 bucks Yes, I'm actually listening to French music right now, so maybe that's why it's, it's making my English even harder. Um, so there are, I think it's two hundred, and then hundred and fifty, and then a lot of other like under two thousand gets fifty, and under one thousand six hundred gets fifty. Like there's a lot of different um, rating like prize pools, like rating categories. So yeah. Not only us hear the music too, well, unfortunately, I cannot play music on official just.com broadcast. 200 bucks. 200 bucks. Guys, you need to remember this is the official chess.com channel. I gotta play this! Why did I pre move that? I could have taken away his like right to castle. Oh my god, I'm so sad right now. I'm actually so... I could have done that because like... Ah, I could have played this first and he had to move his king and then he couldn't have castled. I think I just cursed myself. <laughs> I think, I think, I think I'm just cur- I think, I think I just cursed myself. That was caster's curse, but on myself. So that was a bit unfortunate. Um... <clears throat> I'm too used to pre moving bullet. Yeah, I'm sorry. I cursed your ears. I'm sorry. Hey, look, look, look. I was told I can have fun. Okay? Type one in the chat if you're having fun today. <laughs> okay, we're having a lot of fun. Awesome. I love it when I take over chess.com, Twitch. It's always a good time because people get hit with a lot of things they do not expect, I think. <laughs> I think whenever, whenever I do something like on chess.com, it's just so unexpected. E okay, I'm not going to scream. Um, all right, so that was a bit unfortunate. I wasn't able to do that. Hmm. 
Okay, so I don't have a better idea, so I'm just gonna play this move. My knight is looking very chad, but his knight is also very chad, so it's gonna be a competition of whose knight is more chad. Because, like, my knight's a little bit higher placed, but I guess his actually has, like, better squares to go to. Mm. Also, I have 1 minute 31 seconds. He has 1 minute. Maybe I just go for a flagging angle. Okay, so I'm moving this rook over because I want to defend this, and I'm actually gonna go exchange off this rook so I don't lose my A4 pawn. And a Chad Knight is basically a knight that's on an outpost. We like knights on outposts outposts because um, they are unable to be kicked out. I would be very sad if I, if I draw this 2150. Nothing against 2150 rated players, but... <gasps> no! I missed this move. Oh my god. It's not a bonus gambit. I move my king. He takes here. Oh no, I might lose this game. I just jinx myself again. Okay, I'm never casting my own games again. Like, if I just cast my own games, I feel like I'm just gonna keep losing because I keep jinxing them. Yeah, I'm gonna go make a new queen. I'll, I'll try to make a new queen. Ah! Oh. This is actually checkmating too. Wait a minute. If I go here, there's this. Saj. <gasps> you roast myself now? Yeah, I'm playing terrible chess. I'm gonna go here. No, I just got checkmated. No, I can't queen because this checkmate. Ah, uh, this is why you shouldn't lose your queen, guys. Okay, that's unfortunate. I keep jinxing myself. No, 97 doesn't work. He moves his king to h7. You can't promote with a check. I should have tried that, though. I could have tried that. But then the king just goes here. And even then, if I promote... Even then, if I try to promote, it's just not gonna go well. Like, here, 97. He doesn't have to play king h8. He plays king h7 to so avoid the check. If I promote, he promotes. Show you how to play bullet. Yeah, well, I'm not gonna play bullet Uh, while I am casting arena kings. But it's okay. Yeah, exactly, Max. I mean, it evens out. I sometimes lose to 2100s, sometimes I beat 2500s, and that's just the reality of chess. And that's why my rating is 2300. Smack. That meant, like, high rating, low rating, meet in the middle. Alright, so, um, Hikaru and M. Haynes are actually currently going for first place. So, um, for some reason, Evil Bar went brrr. I'm trying to figure out why without looking at the engine. Okay, wait, I need to go back this move. Well, go back to this move, why? Why is this so good for, for Black? Um, oh, there's Bishop takes C4 because the Bishop here is actually undefended. So it's a discovered attack. Do I have to regularly speak all my languages? So I don't forget. No, not really. Like, I try, but, like, it's a bit difficult, too. Alright, so, rook fe1. I mean, Black Mist has one chance to potentially beat Hikaru in his life. Thanks, Trexits. Thank you, thank you. I speak four and a half languages. Uh, mostly four and with two quarter languages that I'm learning currently. Alright. Actually, I love how this position is actually better. Just straight up better for black. I mean, it's really weird. Knight d8 is a good move. But the idea behind it is a little bit more obscure. Um, because you actually just want to, like, move the knight somewhere else. I don't like these double pawns, but black is still better. Black is still better. Okay, now black is no longer better. Okay, wait, why are we playing so fast? What just happened? I think b takes a5 is necessary. Hmm... You speak C, C++, Python in English. I speak also Python and R from back when I was in school. Mm -mm 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 
Okay, let's take a look at how, um, I mean, this game is a draw now because I think Black's King March off the board was really good. I'm I'm not too sure about Hikaru's decision to play Rook takes EA. I think that alleviates a little bit of the pressure. I think I really like Rook A1. Like, let Black take this Rook. If he Black takes the Rook, then you get your Rook onto an open file before he does, right? So you actually save a tempo, and if he doesn't take, then you just go Rook to A7 and move the Rook away. So I'm actually not a fan of exchanging first. Most of the time, exchanging first in these kind of situations is just not good. But now it's just winning because after h5, white is going to get a really high pass pawn. The king will not come back in time. Instead of playing rook to c6 in order to defend that pawn, he should have just let the pawn go and tried to preserve this pawn. Because even if white has these two pawns with none of these pawns, it's still a draw. It's a difficult draw, but it's still theoretically a draw. So yeah. All right, and that is Hikaru's game. All right, let's take a look at how Haynes is doing. Haynes is still leading the tournament despite his very unfortunate loss the previous round. He's playing somebody who is... He's actually crossed over the 700 rating barrier um, a couple of times. I mean, I think this guy is honestly the chat of the tournament. Chat of this Arena Kings because he is winning on the board and also winning in our hearts with how well he is performing. Despite the... <laughs> Despite his last game in which he blundered checkmate in one. That was a bit unfortunate. But other than that, he's playing pretty well. So I'm pretty happy for this guy. This is definitely um, his event. Can I interview him at the end of the tournament? I think that would be a little bit difficult. But yeah, Hikaru cannot touch the 700s. Exactly. Yes. He can't win though, not streaming. I think he can i don't i'm actually not sure anymore about the regulations i know for there's a best streamer prize there's also a bunch of category prizes but there's also rating prizes and i'm not sure if like non-streamers can win the rating prizes i think it was streamer only for the top three so yeah when did chat become a good thing i say chat it's a good thing so it's going to be a good thing. I mean, Rook to E4 actually wins the queen back, but it's still winning. I mean, everything in this position is going to win for Haynes, so it's okay. You have to stream to get a prize, even if it's a rating prize. Well, he's, he's just fully winning this. I mean, I don't think it's going to be a how to join. So you go to arena, you press next game. Wait, you guys can't see it. But if you go to chess.com slash live and then you go to tournaments and you click on Arena Kings and then you go to... Uh... Oh, let's see if he knows the ladder, mate. <clears throat> yeah, you better pop off stream now. Okay, he's actually won. He did... His opponent did not let himself get ladder checkmated. All right, good stuff, good stuff. All right, um, so let's go back to Hikaru. Let's see how Hikaru is doing. I mean, Hikaru is pretty much contesting. He needs to catch up on 11 points in 22 minutes. So the way that points work in Arena Kings is that the more wins you have in a row, the more points you will get in total. So for example, a win is two points, a draw is one point, a loss is zero points, so you do not want to lose. Um, and I think if you win two games in a row, you get, you win, like on your second win, you get three points on your... Third win, you get four points, and it's capped at five points. But long story very short, just win. Just win. If you win, you'll get points. No cap. <clears throat> so you just got to do that. Yeah, just don't lose. If you just don't lose, you'll do great. All right, so bishop to d3. Okay, Um, we might see queen to c7. All right, we do get that. I mean, I'm looking for a way for Hikaru to actually make a breakthrough in this position. I mean, he just has to hold the position together. And Black's doing a little bit better just because this king is going to be very passive for the entire game. And White's... Whoa, this is a very good move. So White cannot take this because of Queen here, here, and then here. So you cannot do that. Um, Chess.com does amazing on making sure there are no Smurfers or Cheaters. And they have a very, very... uh well integrated system to catch anybody who tries so that will not happen yes <clears throat> all right bishop to be far what wait i'm way behind okay so we're actually gonna get into this end game <laughs> that system is levy 
<laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. That system is levy is very funny. Um, all right, let's say let's see how third place is doing. Okay. Yeah, they have Gotham chess exactly. They have Gotham chess. Um, as uh, <laughs> as the finder for that. Um. <clears throat> yeah, if liquids compress into a finitesimally small amount, it actually becomes gas. No, wait. No, it becomes solid. If gases get compressed, they become liquid. Wait. I'm trying to remember this now. Liquid compressed becomes solid. <laughs> PV equals NRT. Yeah, exactly. PV equals NRT. Okay, so <laughs> compressed, not for water. Okay, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't remember the last time I did science. It's been a while, honestly. <laughs> honestly, it's been a while. <laughs> Dude, I haven't been in high school for a while, and my university degrees had nothing to do with chemistry. But I do remember PV equals NRT. <laughs> <laughs> okay, water is a weird one. Okay, so basically there's just gonna be um very specific things. Alright, so we just basically don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm not listening to a god drop out eco stats. <laughs> May J teach me science. <laughs> you're welcome, dragon, you're welcome. The brain is a muscle. <gasps> oh no no no. Okay, well I think Lanchess is actually just gonna win this game on time. He'll also have a bishop, so let's go back to seeing how Hikaru is gonna do against Chess King, which he has actually played, I think, for the third time, if I'm not mistaken. So once again, as a reminder, when you are at the top of the world, you'll run into the same people. And uh, it becomes a very close group, right? So that's why Hikaru keeps playing against the same people. Haynes is probably has a larger player pool because there's a lot more 700s out there than there are 2700s or 2600s or 2800s. So uh, Haynes is actually going to be playing against people who are potentially lower rated than him and also around the same rating. But Hikaru will always be playing against people who are like 2800, 2900, all that stuff. Yeah, it's such a small world, honestly. Okay, Kaplan, Jeff. It's okay. It's okay. Um, yeah, there's a reason I no longer do school and I uh, cast chess. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. Oh, and his opponent just fed him a free rook. Okay. Haynes has definitely, um, is definitely like playing well. He's playing very well. But Hikaru only needs seven more points now to come back. As you guys can see, Hikaru is on a seven game win, seven game win streak. If he loses, the win streak gets reset. But right now, he is winning five points per win. So technically, he only needs two wins in order to catch up with Haynes. So yeah, it's going to be a pretty good time, I think, for Hikaru, actually. Because another strategy in arena tournaments starts becoming um, trying to play as many games as you can and trying to win as fast as you can, or your opponent's stalling in order to um, make sure that they, to, to in order to try to stop them from playing. So speaking of that, I'm kind of in the mood to play one more game. All right, let's go E5 this time. And one of the bigger benefits of the playing an arena style event is that you can decide to play and not play any time. What mating technique is? Did he do the ladder? I didn't actually watch the rest of this game. I mean, Max, that's the whole point of an arena tournament, right? It gives lower rated players a chance to win. Because a lot of the time, if you're playing a tournament, um, Grandmaster is always going to win. So I think arena events are actually really, really good. And I'm not speaking this on behalf of chess.com. This is my personal opinion. I think arena events are really good for encouraging um, lower level players to play. Because it's not fun to get to never win anything. I think it's a great idea to let people who are not like Hikaru level in chess to also win some prizes. So yeah. Why is there a Polish flag? I'm quarter Polish. Yeah, now the commentator jumps into a game. Can you imagine being a lead commentator and one day you're just like, yeah, I feel like playing right now. Let me just play. Okay, so I probably want to go here in order to change, exchange the bishop for a bishop. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. -mm -mm -mm. Okay, let's go here. Uh, 
All right, guys, do not worry about whether or not Haynes is a Smurf. I can conf I, I can fully, fully admit that I think Haynes is pretty not good at chess. He only looks like he's good at chess because he's playing people who are equally as bad as he is in chess. So do keep in mind the system of arena tournaments is different from what you've probably usually seen. Um, and let's leave the Eddie, you know, checks and stuff for that to chess.com. All right. Thank you. It's not your job. Your job is to enjoy the content. So tally well, he's talented for a 600 rated player. Haynes is fine, guys. Exactly. Thank you very much. He is just a bit built different from his peers at 600 rating. Like, imagine this. You could have a good day playing against kids as well. <laughs> First in arena, good enough to avoid the roasts. I, I, don't, I think it's pretty much impossible to avoid the roasts. I mean, like, there's so many stories. Okay, I don't really want to tell this on Chess, Chess, Chess TV um official chess.com broadcast but yeah i'm not very nice to grandmasters it doesn't really matter who you are you know like every you should treat everybody the same and if i treat everybody the same that just means if i roast one person a certain amount i gotta roast everybody a certain amount sometimes it's just about treating everybody equally okay so i'm going here but you can play that <laughs> okay so i should probably go here no discrimination exactly equal opportunity roasting is very precise okay if i go here it's gonna play that and then i go here and get this i mean the end game is not looking too good for me but i can probably make it work <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> yep yep exactly totally on chess we're pretty much uh we as in me as a women grandmaster pretty much on par with Fader masters i mean i have both titles as well so yeah no one needs to feel left out you can just roast everybody gotta roast them all okay so this end game is actually interesting um he probably should have defended the c pawn because like, he has double pawns, right? So even if he lo lost the e-pawn, it would have still been the same as losing... Like, it it's not as big of a deal as losing the other pawn. Because he still has a pawn. That makes sense. I've been playing chess for uh, a very long time. Eat. Okay, let's okay, go here. Okay, when I go here, the next Arena Kings is probably on Friday because Arena Kings run Fridays and Mondays. Haven't seen me roast Levin in a while. That's because I haven't really interacted with Levin in a while. It's hard to roast people you don't interact with, you know? No, I'm not from Singapore. I'm quarter Polish. Oh, wait a minute. This is not looking good. It's fine. I am trolling a little bit. It's okay. Maybe I should have played this one game. I'm Polish at heart is the more accurate term. Okay, I was winning this end game. I need to go back and look at how I lost this end game because now I'm sad. Uh, I'm exactly 2300. Alright, I will not play another game in this arena. If I, holy, there's 100, 1,400 people in this arena, Kings. Is this the biggest arena, Kings, ever? But it's okay. I think I played a good game. It was just, um... Like, rook, rook end games are so difficult to play. Okay, wait, let me see. Maybe I was... I was no, nah, okay, I thought I was winning. That's my biggest issue. It was actually just a draw. I had to play for the draw angle. Yeah, rook to here, then. Okay, I just thought I was winning. Sometimes what messes you up is you thinking that you're winning, but you're actually not winning. That's the problem when you have too much ego. 
Okay, so Haynes did win that game. Let's close this game. Okay, so how's Hikaru doing? Hikaru is catching up. He has 82 points. If he wins this game, he gets another 5. And that puts him at 87. And with 10 minutes left in the timer, he can finish this game. And he still has time for one more game. So he is very much on track to be catching up with Haynes for the Arena Kings title. Nobody cares about Hikaru. Oh, come on, man. Hikaru crying in a corner over there. All right, let's see how Haynes is doing. Haynes' position is very much not good. He is actually down the exchange, but... And he has just decided to give up his bishop. For why? Um, also, I just realized I'm not actually showing the clock on top, so let me actually edit the scene so you guys can see what the timer is at. Um, because as the Arena Kings comes closer to an end, there's only 9 minutes left for the games to happen. White has actually won by checkmate. Oh no, Haynes! I think Hikaru is actually going to win. If Hikaru wins this game, he's actually going to be fully caught up now with Haynes. Magnus was in Ludwig's channel? That's so wholesome. That's so wholesome. Yes, Hikaru's on a nine-game win streak. Nine-game win streak. If Hikaru wins this game, he will be getting to 87 points. Let's take a look at how Haynes is doing. Haynes needs to go fast. He needs to win this game. He doesn't have any win streak, so unfortunately, if he wins this game, he only gets two points. So he'll be at 87 and he will be tied with Hikari. He's just decided to blunder his knight. Oh no, no, not like this, Haynes. Not like this. Oh my god. That is not very Chad. This is very much just not Chad. Okay, wait. Wait. There's always hope, exactly, when it's uh, two lower-rated people play. Oh, wait! Dude, this evil bar is making me cry a little bit. I, I'm not sure if I want to if I, if I can if I can watch this but Hikaru is winning so he'll definitely be at 87 points so we just gotta hope that Haynes wins this game I guess <laughs> yeah, he's a joke. Oh, wait, his opponent found a really good move it's actually funny how the same tactic has happened on both sides of the board like it's mating too This is not very good. Oh, he's about to see it. He's about to see Jackman won. There's hope. And as I predicted, he currently has won. Okay, so maybe I was a little bit wrong with um, the prediction, but he got 86 points, so. He got 86 points. Haynes needs to win this game to get to 87 in order to have a chance to win and also as a matter of fact hikaru has the advantage oh my god this evaluation bar is not happy right now this is called a sign this is called the sign wave by the way guys where an uh evil bar goes up and down up and down yeah it's a sinus sinusoidal soidal wave Very tactical game for sure, but I think, oh my god, just take the knight, please, please, I can't, please just take the knight. I love how on one hand I'm watching Hikaru, on the other hand I'm watching this guy, this I, this, this 700 rated player. How is he just not taking the knight? Ah, it's fine, it's fine. Oh my god. Okay, so as a matter of fact, Haynes needs to win this game as quickly as he can. He doesn't have time to stall because Hikaru's at 86 points. Haynes is only at 85, right? And with only 5 minutes, 45 seconds left in the arena, and for some reason it's not updating, which is why you guys are probably at, like looking at me like, what is she talking about? But 
um once the timer runs out of time it doesn't matter if your game is in progress it just stops so Oh, we finally take the night! Ooh. Oh, we took the night! Except it's defended this time, but the good news- Oh, and his opponent actually saw that he had to take back with this knight, because if I take it back with the queen- play league winning one moment losing the next moment winning again losing again baron throws dragon throws <sighs> like this is this is just like watching my orc play chess honest i mean watching my orc play league it's okay the black not castle no black never castle neither side ever castled it's not chess it's content and he has actually flagged his opponent okay go fast Hayes. you need a next game you need another game um, so once the score updates, Hayes is actually going to be in first with 87 because he got two points off of that win. Hikaru is probably on track to win this next game because he's playing against somebody who is 23-90 and his opponent only has their five seconds. So Hayes needs to go fast. Hayes needs to go fast. He does not have time to stall. What is he doing? He needs to win. He needs to win. The thing is, there's only three minutes left for him to win this game. So he has to actually play fast. Okay. This is not looking very good for Hanks. This is not a promising position for him at all. I mean, Hikari's gonna win this game for sure. And he's gonna get he's going to leapfrog above Hanks with I believe eight ninety points. Ninety points. I don't think Hanks has time. I think Hikaru has actually already won the uh week seven Arena Kings tournament. And he has already won it. He has already won it. So at 90 points and Haynes has 87. There is actually no way for Haynes to come back. Even if he wins this, he will only get two points. Is it maybe two points? Yeah. So I think I think Hikaru has actually confidently won it. There was no checkmate in one at all. We are, however, watching this game because Haynes is the closest person to be able to catch up to Hikaru. In third place, we have... Um, uh, in third place, we have land chess, and in fourth place, we have... Um, do I try to pronounce the name, or do I just kind of... Because I'm going to mispronounce it. Okay, okay, I'm going to call him okay. I'll call him okay. That's a cute name. I'm, I'm nicknaming him okay. Um, all right, so <laughs> his name is being okay. <laughs> all right, so Haynes is actually down. Well, he's not down anything, but like the position is just not easy to win. I mean, he needs to win within the next two, one minute, 40 seconds, because otherwise he's going to run out of time. He will not be getting the points. So um, it will not be great. How's Haynes not losing at the opening? Well, it is 700 rated chess. You might as well be asking, how is he not winning after that opening? Right. Um, okay, so Hikaru is, I mean, it doesn't really matter how Hikaru does in this, in this, in this game specifically. Because, you know, he knows he's already probably clinched first. There's not just not enough, simply not enough time for Haynes to be trying to win this game, especially in a uh, worse position. Oh my god, Haynes is just not... He was performing so well. I think I think two-hour events are maybe a little bit long for him, but 45 seconds left. Um, it is not going to be looking good for Haynes. It's really not. 
And speaking of that, actually, OK doesn't really have time to catch up with third place. So I believe third place is already decided. It will be Lanchess. No, Lanchess is not Ian. That's not Nepo. Um, Haynes is, however, going to be the people's champion. Having led for most of the event, he this game will not even finish. So he will actually not lose this game unless he decides to resign in the next 11 seconds, which doesn't make sense. Uh, okay, well, he did not win, but it's fine. He is still second, and if he streamed, he would win his money. If he didn't, I do believe he can still get a prize because of the rating group. So, Haynes is an absolute legend for scoring 27 wins, 7 losses, and 1 draw. Hikaru won the event with 25 wins, 25 wins, 4 losses, 1 draw. So, that win, that win streak at the end, 11 games, wow, wow. All right, well, it has definitely been a very, very fun time casting. <laughs> oh, the prizes are to streamers only, to streamers only. So Haynes might actually not win a prize, but I do think that 7,000 people are going to remember Haynes in their heart as the 600 rated players, as a 600 rated player who became a 700 rated player after the event. Honestly, I think we should give a round of applause to everybody who played in this tournament. Hikaru, Haynes, Lanchess, or Ian Chess, I'm not sure which one that is. Um, Naming some other streamers off the top of my head. Uh, Got a Komsky played, Ming played. So just a huge prop. OK also played. I played. Oh my god. Yes, I played as well. I forgot about that. Let's not talk about my score. But I hope everybody had an absolutely great time. Um, with me today i hope you guys enjoyed me scuffing up the uh commentary a little bit and i hope everybody has a great night thank you guys so much for coming here today i will be signing off going onto my own channel shout out to myself i guess my there's my channel aka nemsko if you haven't followed me already um and if you haven't followed hikaru make sure you follow him uh, gm ming lei is a wonderful time gata Komsky streams at gm I am GM Gata Um Yospem is also streaming. Uh, a lot of streamers, so make sure you're checking out the entire chess.com streaming squad to see all of the other amazing streamers. All right, have a great night, guys. If you're not coming to my stream later, well, take care, and I'll see you guys some other day on Official Chess TV broadcast.